Welcome to another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. I'm your host, Stephanie Dobson. I'm the founder, CEO, and content creator for Up A Notch Learning, Inc. And I'm pleased to bring with you with us today another guest who will bring us positive and constructive ideas, skills, and tools to help you on your quest to a healthy, thriving family after divorce. I'm pleased to have with us today, Karen Millen, who's the author of An Amazing Divorce. I've got the book right here. What you can do for yourself, for each other, and for the children to achieve it. She is also the host of her own podcast called The Healing Podcast, the place where you will learn and get inspired to heal, and is now using her over 22 years of business strategy, consulting, and entrepreneurship education and experience, together with over 15 years of healing and her candidacy for life coach certification with the ICF as a one-on-one healing and transformation life coach who is on a mission to inspire and help people heal from divorce or breakups and eliminate the roadblocks in their lives so they can thrive romantically and professionally. She can be found on www.healin.net and on Instagram at Healin with Karen. She's the proud mom of three, loving wife and ex-wife, a Canadian and Colombian who now calls New York City her home. In addition to her own Healin podcast, Karen has been a guest on many podcasts to bring attention and awareness to the importance of grieving and healing on a person's journey to living the fullest and most fulfilling life possible. Welcome, Karen. Stephanie, thank you so much for having me. Such an honor. You bet. And today, Karen and I will be talking about grief and healing in the context of families who are separating or divorcing. So Karen, can you tell our viewers what healing means and why it's so critical for people who are going through separation and divorce? Thank you, Stephanie. Yes, heavy topic. (laughs) Healing is really gaining or increasing our awareness of all of our childhood wounds, of all of the negative beliefs that we created and that are keeping us, you know, keeping us stuck, keeping us in a relationship that perhaps we didn't want to be in or got us to marry the the, not the right person for us. So Mm -hmm. Healing is a journey, a journey that takes time, and it starts by increasing that awareness and then allowing ourselves to feel those feelings and feel that pain so that we can process it, we can reparent it, and we can move on and and go where we want to go. You know, when it relates to divorce, it's really important because, you know, coming up with, why did we marry this person? Why didn't we feel, you know, why didn't we hear our intuition? Or maybe it was the right person and we grew apart or behaviors happened that we weren't aware of. Why did we stay so long? Why, why are we afraid of leaving? Why are we so terrified? So kind of going to the, the core of it all mm-hmm. uh, was really the key to, to my healing and my achieving a really healthy divorce. Mm-hmm. The the key pieces that I heard you talk about is number one, it's a journey. And number two, it's about going to those pain points. And in other interviews that we've done, we talk about going the importance of going to those pain points, because that is truly what can make change and transformation for the future. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so go on. Mm hmm. Yeah. So yes, Stephanie, I think that, you know, one may think of going to therapy or working with a coach as one of the first steps or, 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 or really diving deep and journaling. And, and that's really important. And that's one of the first steps of the healing journey is it's saying, you know what, I'm getting a divorce, something happened, something went wrong, what happened? And, you know, going to therapy or journaling, like I said, it's important to bring all that subconscious to the conscious to relate. I always highly recommend it because it's sharing with a an objective source on how you feel. You know, it's not always good to share our feelings and our facts and our dirty laundry with our friends and family because we get over it, they don't. Uh, so that's the first step, but it has been proven that even though we can 
acknowledge at the cognitive level the things that happened to us as a child. So, for example, when I married my ex-husband, I knew my father worked a lot. I knew my father wasn't around. I knew that I didn't have a close relationship with him. I knew it. I I wore it like a badge of honor. I shared it with my friends. But I've never felt it. So I went ahead and married someone who replicated my father's behavior. I then was really unhappy. I felt unheard. I felt unseen. I felt that I wasn't my ex-husband's priority. And I stayed there for 17 years. So the healing modalities that I talk about at the healing podcast are modalities that allow us to go deeper and allow us to feel because research has now proven that we need to feel to heal. So we are experts at repression. Freud said that we are really, really good at repressing anything negative, anything bad that happened to us. We either repress it or we understand it and wear it or we hide it. We put band-aids on it. We drink, we have sex, we, you know, we, some people do drugs, like anything to escape that reality. So there are modalities that I like to address um, that helped me tremendously. Uh, the minute I got separated, I booked um, two EMDR sessions a week. Mm -hmm. uh, EMDR is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing is a technique that was developed over 30 years ago by someone here in New York called Francine Shapiro. And it's a technique that has been significantly validated through a lot of research to be extremely um, effective. Um, and what it does is that it looks at your issues. So we are getting divorced and we may have a lot of reasons. Um, you know, he's not connected to me uh, or she or he's not connected to me. I wasn't their priority. They didn't hear me. They didn't listen to me. They didn't love me. They betrayed me financially or sexually or in a relationship. So you would go to therapy and would just start talking about what happened and how mm -hmm. you feel. With EMDR, you look at what happened at one issue at a time and they identify a negative belief. So in my, in my case, you know, he never heard me. I would tell him I don't want to go to Miami on vacation and he would show up with tickets the next day. And that was that 20 times a year for 17 years. Um, so instead of just talking about what happened to us, it's like, what negative belief do you associate with that? And mine was, I'm not good enough. And when you associate one negative belief, EMDR bilaterally stimulates you. Um, so it could be with a machine that you feel a TikTok from one leg to the other, or if you're doing it on Zoom, uh, Prince Harry was talking about it where you tap your shoulders or there's online tools that you can just stare at a light back and forth or a therapist in front of you or on Zoom will do this. And for some reason, it allows you to connect to your emotional side. And Stephanie, stuff that you were hiding starts coming up. So for me, I started getting memories of my dad never being around, my dad never playing with me, um, never spending time with me. Um, I, I had visions of me calling my mom at work and saying, my brother is bullying me. Oh, well, that's too bad. Like all these things. Yeah. And it allows you to feel it. And one thing is to like, yeah, my parents work too much. Everybody's parents had to work, but to actually allows you to go back there and feel the sadness and feel the pain and see this eight year old Karen, lonely, sad, abandoned, forces you to cry, which we work really hard not to do. And then it has the, the reprocessing part of the, the equation, which is like, okay, Karen, you're 45 years old now. You're a successful businesswoman. You are, are accomplished. You are this. What would you tell that eight-year-old Karen? Mm -hmm. And you kind of reparent yourself. There's a lot of techniques now talking about reparenting the inner child. And you tell little Karen that she's okay now and that she's worthy and that she's important and that she's beautiful and that she's heard. And you, Stephanie, heal. Like you go into a session and you work on one negative belief at the time. You might have 30, you might have four, 
super effective and you come out of it feeling like whoa like and I'm done. like a big weight is lifted off your shoulders yes. you go in there not even realizing what that pain point is what that you know in until you're within the therapy it would be really hard to even know what that is and that's what the therapist is able to do is to is to help you to get to that pain point to feel that pain so that you can heal from it. And my understanding is, Karen, as, as you were saying, is that you've done EMDR and you refer a lot of your clients uh, who come to you for healing, you refer a lot of your clients to other uh, third-party professionals, including EMDR therapists, and have just yes. seen the amazing results from it. Yes. So part of the coaching that I do is that I work with divorced men or women to understand what happened, to work in their vision, their dream, what they want for the future. So get them a little excited. You know, they're obviously heartbroken for a lot of one party. They need to redo their career or reinvent themselves or go back to work. Um, so we help on the vision. We help on their values, on their drivers, what's driving them on, on their love languages. Like, what do they want out of life? Because, you know, I have a lot of clients that come and say, should I stay or should I go? Should I get a divorce? It's not about getting a divorce. It's about get, being happy. It's about loving yourself. It's about finding yourself. To go from a horrible, unhappy situation to an even worse situation where you have less funds, less friends, more pain, mm -hmm. that hurts the children. So divorce does not destroy children. It's the conflict before, during, and after. So if you want to get a divorce to protect your children, but then you're divorced and you're unhappy, you're fighting with your ex, you, the damage is there. So it's like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and we, so and we, it, uh, we work with uh, all of our community members to help them to understand through all of our resources that it's not separation and divorce that is inherently negative for children. And this is scientifically proven. It's conflict and living in high conflict household and having that toxic stress that is on the children every single day. And especially um, in younger children under, under the age of five can be especially traumatic where their, their brain development is, you know, they're developing their brain so quickly that, uh, that you're, you're actually changing the, the uh, um, what their, their brain is going to look like as they get older, the younger that they are, if they're in that high conflict scenario. So if we can create a lower conflict scenario by divorcing, um, that's what we want to do. And that's what all of our resources try to help families to do is to get those tools so that they can lower the conflict between uh, two co-parents. But divorcing well, divorcing mm -hmm. the way you are working to help people mm -hmm. divorce, yeah. divorcing with, with love, divorcing with compassion, divorcing with empathy, not getting mm -hmm. the kids in the middle of anything, yeah. really focusing on them. And that's what I did. So when I got divorced, instead of lawyering up and fighting and fighting and fighting, I focused on my healing. We had a great mediator to sort of focus on what needs to happen. But both my ex and I went to therapy twice a week to work with a professional to heal our wounds. And that, Stephanie, brought so much love, so much empathy, compassion, responsibility where we both came to each other a month after our original separation and said my ex even though I was leaving him he's like I let you down I never hurt you I I'm gonna take full responsibility and we're gonna do this right and I have to tell you mm -hmm. that eight years after our kids were eight and six now they're 17 and 14 and they thrived they did great at school throughout. They have great friends. They have me and my ex in the same household most of the time, like loving them and taking care of them. So it is possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know it your... was really important part well, of the equation. In your book, you talk about how the cost of your divorce was $7,000 and the cost of your therapy was $10,000. And so that really drives home that point that you, you did spend a lot of time, money and energy on that active and conscious effort to heal and to grieve and to get to that next stage of your life as co-parents. And even in uh, your bio, 
I talk about you being a loving wife and ex-wife. And that is part of your identity. And I know uh, your story is so wonderful. I'd love for our viewers to get a glimpse of it. It really um, was uh, amazing. Um, and you, of course, titled it An Amazing Divorce. Um, and it really has has shaped you. And the, you know, for a lot of viewers, it won't be possible for them to have the kind of relationship with their ex-spouse that you have. But despite that, I think so many of the points that you make in here, even if people can pick out some of the points that they can use to their own healing, because of course it takes the other person being interested in, in healing as well for them to be involved, but you can take so much responsibility for your own healing. And so I'd love for viewers to get a, a glimpse of your story and some of those efforts that you took. Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of the first chapters that I talk about, and I know we wanted to talk about this, is honoring the grieving process. Mm -hmm. And I, after I wrote my book, I became a coach and I realized how many of my clients do not honor the grieving process. You know, you sort of, your husband tells you he's leaving or you decide you're leaving and you start fighting immediately. You're like, okay, we need lawyers to stay with the kids, to stay with the house. But you know, divorce is second to death. It is categorized by the American, uh, by the ACE, uh, adverse childhood effects as trauma. It is sad. It is the death of a relationship. It's the death of an identity. It's the death of friendships, of in-laws. Community. Of, of, of communities. The death of a dream of what you were going to be. It is so sad that... A lot of people, I've had clients who are working with me now five years post-separation and they're starting to grieve their marriage now. <laughs> like, And they found that they're out. They're just keep meeting the same guy with a different face, different name. They're not getting where they want to be and grieving and sitting there and crying and, and feeling how sad it was. It's really good. It's really important. You know, it's better out than in. You know, flowers need a lot of water to grow. Um, so we honor the grieving process. I cried my eyes out for about three months through the EMDR therapy, through seeing my kids with my ex. Um, spent a lot of time with him talking about what happened as many times as he needed to hear it and understand it. You know, a lot of people say, tough, I'm done, deal with it. You're on your own. And you forget that if you have children, it's not over. This person is going to be there at the hospital when you become grandparents together, at first communions, at weddings, at graduations. Like this person is in your life, like it or not. So you can think you're divorcing him and it's over, but it's not. So, you know, I think that I helped my ex grieve. You know, a lot of people is like, okay, when am I moving out? It's like, it's sad. It's sad that you're moving out, you know? I help the kids grieve, you know, I sort of force them to cry. I would read to them, you know, uh, how dinosaurs divorce every night and other divorce stories. And they're like, I'm fine, you know, and I'm like, sweetie, it's sad. It's sad mommy and daddy are not in the same house. It's sad daddy's moving out. So I really, when you grieve anything in life and you let your body feel the feelings, it sucks, it's not fun but it's over soon, you know, it's short-term pain for long-term gain. I've seen it repeatedly in many things in my life and many things I've had to grieve and others that when you do that, it's two months of terribleness and then, and then you feel better, then it's off your shoulders, then you have clarity, you, you just move on. So grieving, number one, healing, number two, spend the time, spend the money, you know, a lot of us, despite of our wealth or not, you know, we have money for a phone, we have money for wine, we have money for shoes, it's taking whatever we can afford. There's a lot of affordable ways of getting help. There's things online for $99 a month. There's, you know, I, like you shared, it, it's funny, I spent 7000 on the entire process. But the first three $3,500, Stephanie, was before the healing sessions, before my ex was going to therapy, that we had a meeting with the mediator actually. 
and we only met for two hours and the bill was huge. And I'm like, oh, what happened? We had sent, and my ex had sent like 10 emails, long emails with things that were no pertinent to our co-parenting agreement or <laughs> financial needs of all emotional stuff that of course a professional lawyer read and understood and charged for it. So mm -hmm. you either spend that money with someone that cannot help you emotionally and understand your wounds so that you know what's the meaning behind the house? What's the meaning be behind the second house? Like what is really what you need versus going into mediation with that much anger and hatred and bitterness and not going for what you need, but going to just hurt the other person. Yeah, and we've got um, we've got other uh, episodes where we talk specifically to uh, therapists who talk exactly about that, that it's really important to diversify your use of professionals. And so if you talk about the context of spending the first $3,500 on, well, you know, before the healing began, you could have probably taken those resources and, you know, had, you know, 18 times the value or 10 times the value going to someone who was specific to what you needed, whether it was a therapist or whether it was some other professional that could have helped you to put that whole package together. And that's what we really encourage here at Up and Notch Learning is to learn about the various people and types of professionals. Uh, of course, you know, we interview one therapist and that person might not be in your jurisdiction. This is a global enterprise. And so wherever you are in the world watching this, you can use that those same tools and look up someone who's in your local area who might be able to help you with those uh, with those services, because that will help you that you can go to your lawyer for, or your mediator, your divorce professional for for those services specifically and not send the 10 or 12 emails that that don't necessarily help your help your cause at the end. Yes, and I highly also recommend working with a certified coach because what I do and many others do as well and and you know it's all about who would you who you would want to work with. I recommend working with anybody is really understanding what's behind your actions, what's behind your feelings. So especially with mediation or with the kids or, you know, I had a client um, last week who was very upset that her ex-husband introduced the kids to a girlfriend and she was just livid. And it's like, we are trying to go to what's behind your thoughts and what thoughts are coming out and what beliefs are coming out about the situation. The situation is that a woman picked up your kids. What's the thought? The thought is like, I'm going to be replaced as a mother. The thought could be my kids are going to like her more. And when you think that way, how do you feel? I feel angry. And what do you do when you're angry? Oh, I snapped at the kids. I screamed at them because I really wanted to scream at my ex. I sent my ex three nasty emails. And what happened? He called me a name and now we hate each other. And, and how's that working out for you? Terrible. So let's look at that thought. Let's look at that belief. How true is it? And we look at it, we analyze it. Are the kids really going to replace you? Why are you irreplaceable? What thought would you rather have? Oh, they're just meeting someone, period. And if you feel so much lighter, how would you feel? And if you feel that lighter, how would you act? Oh, I'd have a great afternoon when I pick up the kids and my I'm not sending a nasty email to my ex. And understanding that I work to uncover every thought and every belief be behind the way we feel and the things we're doing so that we can stop doing what we don't want to be doing or we can start doing what we want to be doing. And when that doesn't work, because that's that method is like a cognitive behavioral therapy method that's also very effective. But when that doesn't work and you're still triggered and you're still, that means that there was complex trauma, that there's something deeper that needs EMDR, needs hypnosis, needs a deeper healing modality that I accept, that I that I talk about in several episodes on the podcast. And then I work to personally match you with the right therapist. So I speak to the therapist. If you're in Calgary, if you're in Toronto, if you're in New York, we look at your price point, we look at your values. You know, I have clients who want to do psychedelics. You know, they 
more open-minded and had some experimental parts in their life with with different drugs and want to go deep that way which is extremely effective too if done professionally and with you know with a psychotherapist so that's part of what I do and what people do so that you can really thrive after divorce so that if you're divorcing and putting your kids through that it's really for the better again whether you know it takes two to tango and there's a lot that I did to make our, our divorce amazing but you could be really happy and you only need one And if you're giving your kids that love, that stability, that joy, you're recoupling and you're really showing them what it's like to have a beautiful marriage, a healthy marriage, you are dancing and loving them. Their dad or their mom could be grumpy, could be having issues, but you're giving them enough sheltering to create that healthy emotional well-being that your children need and that you need because you're worthy. You're worthy of love. You deserve a better life. So that's that's the stuff I work on. Yeah. And it and it's and it really is a team approach. And we all have our specialties and we can make sure that our clients get to the right people that they need um, at the right time. And I do it all the time, uh, especially when I'm if I'm working on the legal aspect of something and I know that someone needs help with the financial piece. I send them to a financial expert who has experience in the divorce context and there's certain certifications about that. And there's other episodes where we talk about financial divorce professionals who can help to bring further understanding in that aspect, whatever you're lacking to make sure that you can heal and move forward positively, constructively as a healthy, thriving family, that's the most important thing. And so the more tools that we can bring. And so I'm, I very much value your perspective, Karen, on the healing front. And what I'd like to do is to get an idea from you of our, your top three tips. I always end every interview with that. And if you can give us your top three tips to our viewers who want to heal after divorce. Thank you, Stephanie. I, I completely agree. I'm always referring clients to financial to mediators because I don't do any of that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So the the top t- tip, uh, the top three tips, as I said, one is grieve. Do not underestimate the power of crying and letting yourself cry. Put together, you know, put sad tunes. Adele is great. <laughs> uh, heal. So spend every penny you can afford to heal. Journal. Uh, listen to different podcasts on healing, read books. You know, you can email me. I have a list of resources, books, uh, other podcasts, podcast episodes, just heal. And uh, three is find some spiritual values that allow you to be patient, loving, giving, and empathetic. Uh, personally, I read all the work from Deepak Chopra when I was getting divorced. I read David Suvak. And there's no hurry. Just just everything happens for a reason. Sometimes divorce takes time. Um, and be patient because I was patient. Uh, my divorce did take a long time to finally finalize. But when he did, it was peaceful. He took it to the lawyers. He signed it. He sent it to me. There was no fighting because it happened. There's divine timing in everything we do. And having patience uh, in this process is really crucial. That journey that you describe is so critical and the differentiation between the emotional divorce and the legal divorce. And so many people that come to me want that legal divorce and they want it yesterday. They don't want to take the time for it even the legal process. They don't want to take the time for it. I am done. I was done months ago. I was done years ago. And I just want it processed. Here it is. Let's get this done as quickly as possible. And of course, as inexpensively as possible. And certainly we can, if the other person is cooperative, we can do things to make it more expeditious and less costly and and all of these sorts of wonderful things. But it's that emotional side you were describing that you've got one particular client who five years later, five years after divorce, still hasn't healed on that emotional side. And so if we can take 
well, we'll take many things out of our episode today, but one of the primary points that I take is the importance of healing and that journey to healing and taking that time, spending the effort and the the money as you know, with all the different various levels of resources that are out there, there's lots of different price points, as you described, and spending that time to heal, go to those pain points, make sure that that journey is to happiness, right? Because that's what is at the end of that tunnel is when you've healed. Now, it may be that you're healing the divorce, it may be that you're healing childhood wounds, it may be that you're healing all sorts of things. But that's, the piece that I really want our viewers to focus on. And I do want to share there's happily ever after, because I didn't believe in that for 17 years. After marriage, <laughs> but I found a man that adores me that I adore that we've been together for a long time. And it's heaven. And it's heaven because we healed. And because I feel like I'm worthy. I, I, I deserve it. I am aware of my triggers so we don't fight because when I'm feeling angry about something he's doing, I understand that that's a wound that's getting triggered. And I tell him, you didn't invite these people. You didn't hear me. I'm just getting triggered. I'm going for a walk. So it's the benefits of healing. It's not just for your divorce. It's to thrive after divorce. It's yes. to find that amazing partner. It's to be an amazing mother. It's to be an amazing professional. It is the ripple effects of healing. It's just the highest return on investment. Yeah. And I, I highly recommend that our viewers uh, pick up a copy of the book, An Amazing Divorce by Karen Millen. Um, the one thing that I want to point out about the, the, the book, and I won't give away the entire the entire uh, uh, book, but I think it is truly amazing, Karen, as you describe in your book, that you have been able to move from Canada to New York with your two children plus from your previous marriage, plus your child from your uh, with your current spouse. And the fact that your ex-husband and the father of your two children comes to New York every single weekend from Ontario and stays in your house for the weekend and is the goddaughter the the uh, and and um is the godfather to your daughter from your new relationship and takes all of the children out on that weekend to uh, experience New York and and to do all of this fun stuff with with um, dad and and godfather and so so I I think it's what you've been able to do is really um, to the to the nth degree of amazing as far as the experience that you're able to give to all three of your children and the experience that you yourself are able to feel going forward in life and what you've given to not only your spouse, but also your ex-spouse. And so it's one big happy modern family is the way I describe it, Karen. That's how we call it, Stephanie. It's our yeah. modern family. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you very much. So once again, Karen can be found at www.healin.net and on Instagram at Healing with Karen. Thank you so much, Karen, for joining us today on another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. And thank you to our viewers for tuning in. Please check out our other episodes in our interview series, as well as all the other positive and constructive resources and courses available in our membership community. See you next time.